I'm Allie with the Potomac Bead Company and I am going to show you today how to use some cup chain to jazz up your uh, cabochon or your Rivoli that you're working with. I'm going to be using a 14 millimeter Rivoli and the color that I'm using is going to be the same one as the sample peach with piece which is Green Sphinx. And I'm gonna change up my colors of my seed beads to make it look different. I'm using cup chain and I'm gonna be using 17 actual little crystals of the cup chain long. And that's for a uh, 14 millimeter Rivoli. If you wanna do a smaller Rivoli, like a 10.7 Rivoli, you would actually change the number of cup chains pieces, you would just do 10 if you wanted to do a smaller Rivoli. So the numbers are gonna change based on the Rivoli size. But when you're working with it, we are going to be working with the cup chain. And to hold the cup chain in place, we're going to be using some bugle beads. I'm using the matte black AB bugle beads. I'm going to be using 11 O's in the pale sapphire AB. And then I'm using Delica 11 OC beads in the matte cobalt uh, color. So matte opaque cobalt. I have a size 10 pony beading needle here in English one. And you may also want a size 12 if you have trouble kind of getting back and forth into your project. I also have some .006 wildfire beading thread. And I have a green color because it kind of matches with all of my blues. I tend to do a lot in the green. Um, also, it matches with the colors because we are gonna be sewing just thread through our cup chain pieces. I also have my thread zap sitting close my slip and snip uh, scissors, and I'm working on a bead mat here. You may also want a bale if you wanna create a bale or actually sew a bale onto it or create your own bale, which I'll be showing you. I'll also talk about some variations. You could actually take this and glue it on to a ring setting or a ring finding. This design is based on a ring design actually that Anna made and I had posted it on our Facebook page a little bit ago. She's kind of gone ring happy and has tons and tons of rings, but it gave me the idea to make it actually flat and a little bit bigger. She had done hers with a 10.7 millimeter Swarovski and then also had done um, this kind of setting with a 12 millimeter Swarovski. So I'm gonna be using the 14 because I'm making it a little bit bigger because I want it to be pendant size. I will instruct you on um, again, how many cups if you want to do something a little bit smaller. So if you wanted to pick up 10.7 millimeter ones and do those as earrings, you can kind of estimate too as you're working with it, kind of bend the chain around. You want it to be not too big, but not too snug around. So you can actually kind of change that design and that look up a little bit to make it bigger and smaller. But I'm going to be using these beads. I may pick up a couple 15 O's um, because I have some near my bead mat and I just have uh, some other videos that I've done recently kind of supplies sitting around me. This is the um, the dark bronze color in a 15 OC bead. I may pick that up depending on, I may not. It's kind of the look of the color sometimes will add 15 O's and sometimes I won't based on how I want it to look. But we're going to be sewing. It's going to be using two different stitch styles. So you're going to be using both right angle weave and peyote stitch. If you don't know either right angle weave or peyote stitch, which is going to be used to kind of create the bezel and then right angle weave is going to be used to hold in our cup chain. Um, you may want to pause this video, come back to it, bookmark it, and then watch the other videos on the right angle weave as well as peyote stitch and we can come back then to this project. So to start out with, I'm going to be working with my 11 OC beads, my bugles, which are three millimeter, and then my Delica beads. Thread-wise, I'm going to cut about four feet of my beading thread. If you know you want to really decorate the edges, um, this one here has a lot of drops added, you can leave yourself a little bit of extra as well. So I've got my four foot piece of beading thread with my needle on it. And what I'm actually going to be doing is creating a track in order for the cup chain to lay in. You can see it really well on this unfinished one here. And basically what we're going to be doing is using the bugles to put a track for the um, cup chain to lay in because the cup chain is going to lay right around in a circle and we're basically creating something for that to lay on. We're going to be using right angle weave for that. 
literally we're only going to be using 17 bugle beads. We're going to be starting off using uh, 34, I had to double 17 there, 34 seed beads in the process. And then um, we're going to be using three seed beads basically per bugle in the 11 O's. So this is going to be where we're using our right angle weave. Right now, I'm gonna pick up one of my seed beads that's laying around on my mat. This is just a galvanized silver seed bead. And I'm gonna drop that down, leaving myself just about a five inch thread end. And I'm going to go ahead and make a stop bead out of that. I'm gonna be taking my thread and needle away from my tail two times so I can see the thread on the outside of the bead. This bead's gonna come off, it's just gonna stop my beads from falling off. So to make this setting that the cab sits in, we are going to be creating that little channel using the right angle weave with our inner channel using 11s, and then our outer edge is gonna use some delicate beads. So our pattern is going to be that we're using two of our 11 O's, a bugle, three of our delicas, and a bugle. Again, right angle weave is based on groups of four and kind of creating a little bit of a square. We're doing a variety of that because I'm using multiple beads. So think about it as a pattern of four, that I have four different types of beads in a row. There might be more than one bead in that specific style. I'm going to sew back through three of my styles of beads. So I'm sewing back through two 11 O's, I'm sewing back through my uh, bugle, and I'm sewing back through my delicas coming out before the second bugle. When I pull that around, it's going to create my first loop. I'm going to sew down through then that final bead here of my bugle and then I'm going to start my next loop over. When I'm starting my next loop over what I want to do is create that circle because I'm using less beads on the inside that's going to create that circle on the outside and that's what it's going to give it its shape and then we'll connect it. So now here I'm always going to have the 11 O's on the same side. So get my two 11 O's, get my bugle bead, and get my three delicas and then I'm going to join to this bugle bead that's already there so I don't need to add my fourth style of bead it's already on there. I'm going to sew back through that bugle and once I throw sew back through that bugle bead there I have my next little rotation. Also at that point I want to sew back through the seed beads that I just put on so back through those 11 O's and back through the bugle bead. If you have trouble with right angle weave, a good way to think of it as is that it's a series of figure eights. If you're still having trouble, you can always pick up two needles. My next pattern here is going to be three delicas, one of my bugle, two of my seed beads. Sewing so back through the bugle that's already there. And again, that's going to put all of those seed beads on the same side and all the bugles, and, or all the delicas on one side. So back through the delicas as well. That's going through my second style of bead. And I'm gonna sew through my third style of bead. Once I have that done, you can look before at the pattern. And I'm gonna again, do my two seed beads because I want those right there in the pattern. I'm going to do a bugle, and then I'm going to do my three seed beads. Go on to the next bugle. Sew down the seed beads, because I need to connect it all. Sew down the bugle. Once I'm coming out the bugle, so you're always going to be coming out on one side, basically. I'm going to add my three seed beads, because I want them on that side going to add my bugle and my two seed beads. So back through the bugle in a circular fashion. Give a nice tight pull. 
So back through the delicas. At that time you're going to sew back through the bugle and this time we're coming out the top of the bugle. Continuing on, two seed beads because I know I want them next, bugle, three delicas, sewing back through again. I'm going to sew through those two seed beads Give a nice tight pull because we're basically starting to get that loop is what we're trying to accomplish. We're going to get that loop that's going to be the base here for our design to go into. Once we have our base then we can continue on. So again we're going to be using 17 bugles. So a good way to remember how to do it is to lay out 17. The last time around we're going to catch that last bugle. So keep adding 16 more bugles or 16 bugles and then I'll come back to you guys. So I just finished going through my 17th bugle bead and at this time I'm coming out a bugle on the inside and you can see it's kind of starting to take shape. What we're going to be doing actually is joining those two together. So to join those two together I'm going to pick up two of my 11 O's. I'm going to sew down the bugle the whole way across the other side of the project. I'm going to add three delicate beads and sew down in a circle through the bugle that I was coming out at the start. And you can see then the thread, I won't pull nice and tight, that base thread that's there, just kind of ignore that, I'll try to cover it with my hand. You can see the thread looped around, give a nice tight pull, and that's going to create our ring. To get our ring a little bit tighter, we're going to sew through all those 11 O seed beads right down the line. And you can see that's really going to pull it closer together. If you wanted to, you could actually sew a line of 34 seed beads first and then pick up the beads on the sides as part of your right angle. I think it's easier to do right angle weave straight and then come back and do this. So I'm just show, sewing right down the line there through all those 11 OC beads. And just kind of push that stop bead out of the way. Make sure it's to the back and that you don't sew through it by accident. And that's really going to pull that line then in. I'll sew through those first two, and then my thread will come out. What I'm going to do now is you can do one of two things. If you want to, you can work on your cab at the top or your Rivoli, or you can do the cup chain. I think it's easier because there's going to be a lot going on to work on your Rivoli first and then come back and add the cup chain. Because the cup chain now we have a track for, it's going to sit basically right along that little area that we just made. So it's going to go right in there just as so. So we're going to add those that after the fact, but right now what we're going to do is we're going to get our Rivoli in place. To get our Rivoli in place, we want to create a peyote bezel. And you can really switch around kind of what you're working with for that peyote bezel. But I'm going to pick up my 14 millimeter bead here, and you can see it's a little bit bigger than the actual Rivoli. If I wanted to, I probably could make this too shorter, um, but I do want a little bit of room to play. So I'm going to give that a nice tight pull, and what I'm going to do now is actually sew through, because I'm linking onto one of the other ones here, I'm coming out after one of my bugle beads, and I'm going to want to go through that next bead in line and come out after it. So basically I'm coming out between the two beads that I added in that row. Naturally, we're going to start to do peyote. To start to do a peyote, we're going to pick up our blue beads here. We're going to do a row with those blue beads. I'm going to do add one of my 11 OC beads, skip that second bead in that right angle unit, and go to the first bead in the next right angle unit. 
Again, pick up one of my 11 O's, skip the second bead in the right angle unit, and go to the first bead in the next right angle unit. This is peyote stitch. Skip a bead, you're adding a bead, you're skipping a bead, you're adding a bead, you're skipping a bead. So we added 34 seed beads to our first row. This row now that we're doing, we should have 17 beads in line. If you want to, again, it's always a good idea to kind of lay your bead counts out. If you're confused or if you don't want to make sure you don't miss a bead, you can do that. So when you're working on it, too, you just want to make sure that as you're going, you're skipping that correct bead and coming through the correct bead. So you can see I'm kind of skipping every other. And by accident, if you jump, you'll be able to, excuse me, be able to see two beads in a row. So I'm going to sew back out that second one. A lot of times when you do it by mistake, it just doesn't look right. And you can see that it's easy to do. So sew through that first bead, coming out the second bead, add a bead, sew through the first one of the next. And we're just continuing on with that peyote stitch the whole row. So you want to add your 17 beads in that same peyote fashion, and then I'll come back to you right when we get to adding our last bead. So I'm ready to add my 16th bead in here, and you can see there's a little gap. I double counted, or 17th, sorry. I double counted just to make sure I was correct. We are doing even count peyote. Once you add your last bead, I'm gonna go through the bead that I'm supposed to. Then I'm also at the same time gonna go up through the first bead that I added of this row of 17. That's how you step up in peyote if you're doing something that's tubular. So we're actually doing tubular, somewhat tubular peyote. When you round out your project, it actually forces almost a row of three to occur. So you have your center base row, and then you have one bead going up and one bead going down. That's gonna be important as we do the back at the final in order to kind of hold our Rivoli in place. So there's kind of the look of it so far. And actually has a nice pretty flower look and I'm gonna do one more row of my seed beads and then I'm gonna go into my delicas the delicas are a little bit smaller than the seed beads so it's gonna pull it in a little bit closer every one now I'm going to add 17 more seed beads and with every bead I go through it's gonna be the bead that's sticking up that I just added I'm gonna add a bead so I'm gonna add a bead so through that bead sticking up. Add a bead. So through that one sticking up. And you're just continuing on that whole rotation. You can see it gets pretty quick once you get going. If your number counts get off, it throws your project off. So like I said, if you're also beginning, a good idea always with peyote is to actually use two different colors. That way it's easy to see which color needs to go on and which bead you're going through. And I'm going the whole way around here, adding those 17 beads in. And then I'll show you that step up again. Once we do that step up, then we're gonna switch actually to Delica beads. And the Delicas are gonna bring my loop in, this rounded loop for our Rivoli to come in. I just think it's funny, there's the wording Rivoli or Rivoli. It's funny, it's kind of like you say tomato, I say tomato. I say Rivoli. Once I get to the end of the row, I'm gonna go through the first bead I was coming out of, and then I'm gonna step up through to the bead that I just added. Okay. Once I have that step up in place, when you kind of turn it to the side here, you should be able to see that you have two seed beads in each little column. So that's also another way that you know that you're done. I'm not worrying about my, my Rivoli or Rivoli because I'm gonna come back and kind of get that to stay in place. Right now I'm just letting it sit off to the side. I'm gonna come back now and add my Delica beads. So just as I was doing, 
I'm going to add the Delica beads in place. So you're going around here adding Delicas. This row, really what you want to do also is give a nice tight pull. So as I'm going around, I'm going to give a tight pull. It's going to force those Delica beads to kind of sit inward, which is what I want for when I lay that beautiful Swarovski in place. You could also use 15 O's right off the bat, but then you have to do a pattern of two, one. So you do two beads and then one bead, two, one. So there's all kinds of variations to how to bezel set using seed beads. Some people like them super tight. Some people like to actually add beads on the peyote row. So I'm gonna continue going through here. And I'm actually gonna go two rows of the Delica beads. So I'm gonna go around and finish step up through that first Delica bead and continue a second row. So I've gone the whole way around now and I just dropped this in so you could see it. I can kind of easily push it out. You do want to give that nice tight grip. That's going to force those Delicas to sit inward in that concave shape. I'm not going to worry about putting my crystal in yet. I kind of going back and forth about my 15 O's and I'm not going to use them. So I'm just going to sew right along that line then. So you can see I'm skipping around my Delicas sewing right along that last line of Delicas. I'm not adding any at this point. I'm just pulling those in a little bit more. I want to reinforce that around two times. So I'm going to go two times sewing right around my Delicas. After this, I'm going to add my cup chain. And then after my cup chain, I'll show you how to secure the Rivoli and also if you would like to add a bell, how to add a bell. Again, this would, these would be pretty cool earrings you could do and glue on backs. And you could also do a ring with this. So I went around once. You can see a little bit of that green thread, but it's really not bothering me. I think I like that better than seeing the dark bronze. So I'm going to go around one more time. And this is why it's important that I, I like to use the thread color that's closest to what I'm working with. If you want, you can even take a Sharpie in the blue color. And you just color your thread a little bit. I use green a lot. Um, I tend not to use a lot of crystal colors just because they're hard for you to see on the video. So I end up using a lot of blues and greens and purples because of that I use the green wildfire a lot. Once you're around two times that's going to kind of pull that whole bezel set in. Now just to show you I'll drop my 14 millimeter Rivoli in and this one's kind of two-sided almost. It fits perfectly in there and it's going to stay nice and in place. I'm going to pop it out so that way I can add my cup chain. Maybe I have it stuck in there now. Nope. Okay to add our cup chain I need to get my needle so that it's coming out one of my bugle beads. To do that, I'm going to sew down my project on a V, on a diagonal, sorry, going through that peyote line in a diagonal fashion. This is going to hide all of my extra little strings there. Then I'm going to come out one of my bugles and get ready to string on. So how I'm going to be adding this is I'm going to sew through my first of my Delicas, add a Delica, sew through the second Delica, and come out. That's just going to get a little kind of pyramid shape that I want. That's just purely for a look thing. I could go back and do that after the fact, but while I'm there, I might as well add that little fringe. The cup chain is going to sit then on top. I'm going to go over the cup chain in between the little bars right there and then I'm going to catch the bugle bead underneath and come out the top. This is when you want to slow do a slow sew. It's a hard one there and you're going to pull it nice down right and in. So you're going to see just the tiniest bit of thread but it's so tiny that you really 
aren't going to notice it. I tried with beads in between, but because you're getting more of a gap at the top and less of a gap at the bottom, it really just doesn't look right because of the curvature of the cup chain. Again, on goes another bead once I'm at the top, kind of force that to the top to get that little shape going. Go over my cup chain to the next bugle. Get, excuse me, grab underneath the bugle, out the top, and then just go nice, slow pull. And that's gonna get that thread in there and your cup chain right in place. So that's two in place. I'm gonna continue on. So through the first bugle, or sorry, through the first delica, add a delica, through the second delica, or third delica, sorry. So I'm almost creating a peyote stitch on top too. I started that on my example one and I liked it, so I'm just gonna do it while I'm doing it. You're going up over the cup chain with the thread, through the bugle underneath, pulling the thread into place, and that adds your next little cup chain in line. I'm just gonna continue going through the row, sewing through a, a delica, adding a delica, sewing through the third delica, in line, giving a nice tight pull, going over my cup chain, and sewing through the bugle that's underneath. I'm pulling that cup chain nice and in line. So I'm gonna continue doing that the whole way around my little Rivoli bezel. So I've gone through now and I've added all of my cup chain in place. And you noticed that, or you will notice that when those two pieces of cup chain meet, sometimes they kind of move around a little bit. What you wanna make sure is that you wanna finish your pattern out. So I just added my last one going through my last bugle bead, but I wanna make sure I still sew up through that first delica, add a delica on top, sew down through. And then even though I'm not really grabbing on anything, just to keep the pattern consistent, I'm gonna go over the top of those cup chain. And sometimes the cup chain will have a little bit of a, an edging or an edge to it. Sometimes you grab onto it, sometimes you don't. Then I'm gonna go up my last bugle. So just like I was doing. What I like to do also to hold that last one in place, oh, I might need to switch to my 12s as much as I hate 12s hold that last bugle in place and what I want to earn sorry that last piece of cup chain in place I'm just gonna make sure that it's really tight and down sometimes you do need to go through and you'll do a second stitch going over that first one so you can see this is nice and completed I love the colors I'm glad I chose them I actually think a crystal Rivoli in here would have would look really pretty as well so I have that dark blue one, but the crystal one would pop also. So I'm gonna add this dark blue here of that um, green sphinx color, kind of has that purple and blue and all of those different tones going through it. So that's basically the top of it. When we flip over to the back, we still have the back that is incomplete. That stop bead is still there, make sure it's to the back. At this point, I want my Rivoli to stay in and I'm gonna work with it while it is in. I'm gonna run along my beads here at the top. And I wanna come down, oops. I wanna come down one of my bugles Might get a little tight through that bugle. The nice thing about beading needles are they're the same size from top to bottom. When I'm out of bugle, I want to jump over, so I'm coming out one of my 11 OC beads that is more so popping out the top, which is going to be, again, the first one after one of my Rivoli uh, raw units of the rounds. Here at the back, I'm going to do another row of seed beads, always going through the first bead after the bugle, and just the first bead after the bugle. 
it's the same as we did on the other side, but because we're reversed and we're on the back side, it's actually the first, the first bead after the bugle as well. So we're just gonna continue going around. After this, I'm just gonna be repeating basically my start. So I'm gonna be repeating by adding two rows of delicas, doing that same step up technique and the nice thing with this Rivoli is it kind of adds a completely different look with that metal in the back and this Rivoli almost has two sides to it. Get that tail out of the way and we'll take care of that tail eventually. As we come around, the, actually what we'll do is we'll take care of it right now. So as we come around, I'm getting ready to add my next bead in. Before I add, let's see where my tail is coming out. Before I add my next bead, I'm going to pull that stop bead off. If you have trouble pulling it off, you can always break it too. Just be careful not to cut your thread. Pull that bead off and tie your knot. Again, it's going to be on the back, but you still don't want to use a ton of glue because you don't want to see any glue marks. But you can cut that extra tail down short and then come back and glue and burn. Going back now to my piece with the needle on, I'm gonna add my bead, sew through a bead. Again, 17 is gonna be the count here, so you wanna make sure that as you're working that you're adding 17 beads. So again, a second row here of 11s, and then this row of 11s, sorry, that I'm adding, and then two rows of delicas going through just like we did at the start to get that Rivoli really sitting down in and cupped in there in the back. Once you have that second time around and then you reinforce by actually going through the outer row two times just like we did the front, you will actually be done with your project. If you're gonna stick it on a ring block, blank like Anna did with this ring here, all you're gonna do is take some E6000 glue, drop it right in there, There'll be space for you to kind of push the ring on there and then that's a rather big cocktail ring I also have really um, don't have the thickest fingers I wear a size 5 so just to give you an idea of where that is on me if you would want to do a bracelet you could do it as these all linked together but I'm gonna wear it actually as a pendant because my thread is getting really low I'm just gonna tie off by doing sewers knots here on the side and then I'll drop back and do a little bit more glue. And I'm also gonna sew kind of down the line here and get rid of some of this thread. Once I do that, what I'm gonna actually do is add some extra thread to do my bail. The bail's up to you whether or not you wanna actually use a bail, um, depending on kind of what look you want. This bail is just a gold plated, um, just a gold plated bail that we have and has the loop here that faces down so you could add a jump ring or what I would actually do is sew it here directly onto the back. I'm however not a big fan of the huge gold bail so what I'm going to do is actually create a bail out of my bugles. Because I don't see the bugles a lot I figured why not add those to it. So I'm going to take a piece of thread, an additional piece, and a lot of times you have kind of pieces sitting around. You're only going to use about 15, 16 inches for that. So if you have something sitting around, all of my pieces are smaller. I tend to work with my threads until the very last minute. I'm just going to cut another piece of thread. And since I still have my tail on, I'm going to tie onto that tail, tying my loop around the thread that's there. pushing that loop down to where it's coming out and then tying those two together again. Once I have that, I'll trim these down short and then I'll get ready for my bail. Still keeping a little bit on there so I know exactly where um, my thread ended and started so that way I can make sure that I go in and burn and glue down that thread. So I have my needle on now to that extra thread that I just added and what I'm going to do is get it to the top of one of these points. I'm going to make my bail actually connect between two of these points that I created with my delicas. 
So I know it's the back, but I still care a lot if you see the thread. So I'm gonna kind of snake the thread, if you can, along a line here. Let's see if my bugle will let me come up it. Mm, maybe. This might be a bugle that I used way too many times, but I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna pull my needle out. And then what I'm gonna do is sew through. So I'm coming out one of the tops of one of those extra delicate beads that I added. This space here, you wanna test your bugle because it's gonna sit right in there. Put your bugle on, sew through that other one there in line. So you can see they're sitting right there. Next, what I'm going to do is sewing kind of underneath and back down the bugles or back down the delicas. I'm just going to circle around seeing the thread just a tiny bit. I want to actually be coming out of one of my bugles. So I'm going to come out the bugle. So that bugle is now in there nice and tight. I don't see really any extra thread. Now I'm just going to do a ladder stitch with those bugles. What that's going to do is create my bail out of the bugles. So I'm going to add a bugle, go through the previous one, and circle around to the one I just added. You do want to make sure when you're doing this that any of the bugles that you have, if they have kind of funky sharp edges or if they're not quite the same length as the one before it, just pick that out. Pick up another one. There are so many bugles in a tube. I'm just going to keep adding however long you want in order to make your pendant. If you're putting it on like a leather cording and you're going to have it always be on there, you usually don't need a huge bail because it just needs to fit around the cording. If you're going to be putting it on a chain or doing a seed beaded necklace, you have to think about what you're putting it on and that's often going to determine the bail size. So I'm just going to add a couple more here and then we're going to round that bail out and then we will be finished. So I have a couple more here doing that ladder stitch, adding a bead, sewing down, sewing up. All right. So currently that is the size of my bail and you can connect it if you want and it, you want it hidden. You can connect it down to the delicas back here, which is what I think I'm going to do. But I'm actually going to add about two more bugles just to make it a little bit bigger. I'm not sure when I'm going to put it on yet. I feel like it needs to have a seed beaded chain, something to do it justice since it's so shiny and beautiful. So I added those extra bugles and now I'm going to lock those bugles in place in the back. If you wanted to, you could actually lock those bugles in place here at the top going through that first bugle that you added again and then just through the last one. One more bugle on for good measure for me. And then swinging around to come outside of that last bugle and then we're going to tuck it down here. The way I'm going to tuck it down is once you lay it down, you kind of figure out exactly which seed beads it's going to go through. I'm going to go through those two seed beads there, those two delicas at the bottom, and that's going to round it out. I'm going to go through that bugle bead one more time, holding it in place. And that's going to kind of round that thread out. And that pulls it down. And also what you can do is go through the beads again and that's going to really secure it. Give a nice tight pull and that gets your bail in working order. And I just like that you can just see it just a tiny little bit there at the top of the actual pendant. To get rid of my thread then, I'm just going to go because it's the back along my Delica line. If you do have a um, Rivoli that is two-sided, you could also connect to the bail at the top. You can also decorate the back of this. Really the options are kind of endless. Because I made the bail the way that I did and because I didn't decorate, I'm just gonna do my knots there right on the actual 
line here, sew a little bit, do a knot, sew a little bit, do a knot. That's kind of the game. And then your pendant is done. If you don't have bugles um, and don't want to invest in the bugles, definitely do the delicas. But the bugles, you could actually change the side row here. It is two bugles, or two delicas long as the three millimeter bugle. I'm going to go in with my scissors, snip that down, and my pendant is completed. So here's an awesome Rivoli pendant using the cup chain. And when you're using the cup chain, kind of it really sparkles like crazy. It's hard to see in the video uh, an actual sparkle, too, of the Swarovski, but it's an awesome little Rivoli. Again, great stud earrings. The big studs are back in. You could easily glue this to a earring backing as well. You could do the big cocktail ring with it. You could link them together. Uh, I think I'm just going to put mine simply on a chain because I like to wear kind of simple necklaces. It would also look nice with some crystals going up the side or I actually have some gemstones that would look pretty with it right here and that would put it on some four millimeter um, amethyst beads. So you can play around with it and it has lots of different uses, hair barrettes, all kinds of stuff that you could do with it. But again, thanks so much for watching. If you get a chance, you can subscribe to our channel. You'll get regular updates then on when we publish videos. You can also go to um, the see more underneath here to get a link to all the different products that are used. If you get a chance, go to potomacbeads.com and our locations page. We'd love to see you at one of our physical locations, especially if you're traveling, you may be in the area, check out where they are. And also share your different creations and everything on Facebook. I'd love to see what you guys make, the different color combinations that you choose, and really how the alterations happen based on the ideas from the videos. There's, thanks a lot for watching the Anna-inspired cup chain Rivoli pendant. Thank you.